Oh, good Tuesday morning to you. A little drier this morning, unfortunately. Oh, there went the cuckoo. He's a little slow today, <laughs> like me. But a little drier today, but still a little rain in the forecast. Hope we hope you guys got some out there that are farming. Hope you managed to get a little bit. Every little bit will help. So, but this morning we are going to start in uh, Psalm 119. 45 yeah. and we're gonna finish up the psalm today the long yep 145 psalms 119 145 and we'll finish it up the longest psalm in the psalms so i pray with all my heart answer me lord i will obey your decrees i cry out to you rescue me that i may obey your laws i rise up early before the sun is up I cry out for help and put my hope in your words. I stay awake through the night, thinking about your promise. In your faithful love, O oh Lord, hear my cry. Let me revive, let me be revived by following your regulations. Lawless people are coming to attack me. They live far from your instructions, but you are near, O oh Lord, and all your commands are true. I have known from my earliest days that your laws will last forever. Look upon my suffering and rescue me, for I have not forgotten your instructions. Argue my case, take my side, protect my life as you promised. The wicked are far from rescue, for they do not bother with your decrees. Lord, how great is your mercy. Let me be revived by following your regulations. Many persecute and trouble me, yet I have not swerved from your laws. Seeing these traitors makes me sick at heart, because they are nothing, they, because they care nothing for your word. See how I love your commandments, Lord. Give back my life because of your unfailing love. The very essence of your words is truth. All your, all your just regulations will stand forever. Powerful people harass me without cause, but my heart trembles only at your word. I rejoice in your word like one who discovers a great treasure. I hate and abhor all falsehood, but I love your instructions. I will praise you seven times a day because all your regulations are just. Those who love your instructions have great peace and do not stumble. I long for your rescue, Lord, so I have obeyed your commands. I have obeyed your laws, for I love them very much. Yes, I obey your commandments and laws, because you know everything I do. O oh Lord, listen to my cry. Give me the discerning mind you promised. Listen to my prayer. Rescue me as you promised. Let praise flow from my lips, for you have taught me your decrees. Let my tongue sing about your word, for all your commandments are right. Give, a, give me a helping hand, for I have chosen to follow your commandments. O oh Lord, I have longed for your rescue, and your instructions are my delight. Let me live so I can praise you, and may your regulations help me. I have wandered away like a lost sheep. Come and find me. For I have not forgotten your commands. So, he finishes up his psalm. Um, still in distress. Uh, there's still people bothering and harassing him. But still proclaiming um, his faith in the word and the promises of God. And this, this section he finishes up kind of with a... Um, I, he's been writing all the way through here and writing about his thoughts and feelings and actions. But today he starts and ends with uh, prayer. And so um, writing these words down was good, but then also letting us know uh, that he's praying. And praying is, you can write down a prayer. Um, uh, the psalm is actually considered a song book. These were sung they had tunes, um, so he's writing down songs. Um, but
But yeah, you can write down a prayer and many people write down prayers ahead of time and then read them during services or occasions because they want the wording just so. Um, others just pray from their heart. Um, prayer isn't anything magical. Prayer is just basically what I'm doing with you this morning. I'm just talking to you. Um, I can't see you. I can see your names up on the screen, but I can't see you. Uh, but I'm talking to you. I'm trusting that you're there. And that's what prayer is. I'm just talking to God, just letting God know what's on my heart, what's going on, uh, what I'm feeling. Uh, not that he doesn't already know, but he likes to hear from us. He likes the conversation. And so um, he's finishing up his psalm, just proclaiming, I pray with all my heart. And this last part of the psalm, he's been under stress. He's been more um, about uh, the, the people, the wicked people, those attacking him, those who aren't walking with the word. So he's, he's praying with all his heart, answer me, Lord answer me. Um, I need to hear from you. He says, I cry out to you. Rescue me. This is not, we're just talking. Um, he's got, he's crying out. There's a, there's a, um, there's a need. And he's, he's making that known to God. And then he says, I rise up early before the sun is up and he cries out for help but he puts his hope in your words in God's words so he's up early in the morning crying out for that help and even while he's crying out waiting for the answer his hope is still in the word of God and then he says I stay awake through the night thinking about your promise, the promise of rescue, the promise of uh, being set free from the oppression, the promise for us of eternal life. Um, when was the last time that you or I probably uh, stayed awake at night thinking about the promises of God? Uh, Lisa was talking with a friend the other day and they're all stressed out about this situation and it's keeping them up at night, and it's, it's almost making them sick. And Lisa's going, you got to give that up, you know. Give that up. Give it to God. Let God take care of it. And, and yeah, that's easy for us to say. But, but we tend to worry, and we tend to think about so many other things. And even in the midst of this man's struggle, and, and the persecution, and the oppression, and, and the, the pain, he's crying out. He's thinking about the promises of God at night. That's what's keeping him awake. Not the stress, not the fear, but he's focusing on those promises. That's where his hope's at. His hope isn't in the stress, it's in the promises. And oh, if we could get our minds to turn and, and get moved into, into focusing more on God, rather than on the situation and the things going on around us. God is ultimately in control. So let's focus on the one who can actually do something about it. Um, he goes, in your faithful love, again, that, that, faithful, that faithful love of God just comes throughout this psalm, all the way through all of the psalms, uh, the faithful love of God. And so again, as this man is praying with all his heart, as he's up early in the morning, he's up late at night, he's crying out. He, need, he doesn't doubt the faithful love of God. And that's just a challenge, I think, to all of us, myself included, to just because things aren't going the right way doesn't mean God doesn't love us. Just because we're not getting the answers we want doesn't mean that God's love isn't uh, faithful, that he's not paying attention. And so he cries out, let me be revived by following your regulations. It's by putting one foot in front of the other and continuing to follow God's word that we will be revived. We will stand firm. We will begin to get renewed uh, in our walk with God. 
He references lawless people attacking him. Um, they're far from his instruct from God's instructions, but he says, "I know your commands are true." He says, "I've known that from the earliest of my days." This must be an older man writing, maybe, but even in his earliest days, maybe in childhood, he saw the promises of God, the truth of God coming through uh, for the adults around him and for people around him. He's known since his earliest days, maybe childhood, that these, uh, these words are true and his laws will last forever. So, um, look upon my suffering and rescue me. I have not forgotten your instructions. Argue my case, take my side, protect my life as you promised. The wicked are far from rescue, for they do not bother with your decrees. Uh, again, he's acknowledging his suffering. Um, argue my case. Uh, stand up for me. Protect me. Um, the wicked that are attacking him, he knows that. He knows that, in a sense, he says they're, they're far from rescue. They may never change. The wicked may never go away because they are far. They don't even bother with the word of God. And so if they're not in the word of God, then they're going to be in the wickedness. They're going to be looking for a different value system. He's, he's acknowledging this stuff may never change. Just rescue me, God. Protect me. Don't let me get drugged into this. Many persecute and trouble me, yet I have not swerved from your laws. Many persecute and trouble me, but I haven't. I haven't swerved. I haven't left your laws. I'm staying one foot in front of the other, following you. Seeing these traitors makes me sick at heart because they care nothing for your word. Uh, these traitors would mean possibly fellow Jews. Uh, traitors would be people who used to be with him or on his side, and now they've turned. Have they sided with the, the wicked oppressors? Have they, um, have they chosen a, to walk a different way? Certainly sounds like it. They don't care anything about God's word anymore. And it breaks his heart. And again, we talked about that yesterday, but when was the last time our heart was broken? Not filled with anger and rage because of everything that's going on, but broken because of the people who are just blinded by Satan and don't even attempt to follow God's word. Uh, later, he says, powerful people harass me without cause. He's being bullied. That's what we would say today. He's being bullied. And, uh, but, he says, my heart trembles only at your word. Bullies can scare us. Uh, I remember bullies from when I was in school. And it was a little scary when you saw them coming because you didn't know what they were going to do. But this guy says, yep, in spite of those bullies, in spite of those powerful people harassing me, I'm only going to tremble at the word of God. I'm only trembling because at the word of God because it's true and it's the one that holds really the power over me. And so I'm not going to give in to these bullies. I hate and abhor all falsehood, but I love your instructions. Uh, he can see all the wickedness that's going around. And he's, he's a recipient of the wickedness, the harassment, the persecution, the unfair treatment. He knows it's wrong and he hates it. He hates that because it's false. It's a lie that people are following. And that's why he's going to hold on to the instructions of God. The instructions of God are love, kindness, care, peace, patience, self-control. Those are the things that Paul wrote about. The spirit that lives in us. The ways of the world are false because they're destructive. They're persecuting. They're harassing. 
the, they cause us sleepless nights and pain. And so in the midst of all of this, this man is not going to give up on what he knows is true. He says, I will praise you seven times a day because all your regulations are just. Uh, uh, Orthodox Jews, I believe it was, prayed three times a day. And they maybe still do, I'm not sure. But they had three times a day where they would specifically just stop what they were doing and pray. I think the Muslims have six or seven times, I'm not sure. Uh, but this man says, I'm going to praise you seven times a day. And really what that means is many or often. The Apostle Paul encouraged the Thessalonians when he wrote to pray without ceasing. And again, prayer is just talking to God. You don't have to stop and get down on your knees and fold your hands and close your eyes. Uh, you can talk to God while you're driving your car or your tractor now if you're out in the fields. Um, it's just talking to God. And so when these situations come up, God, help me. God, keep me straight. Keep me, keep me in the truth. God, don't let me get sucked into this conversation and this gossip. Don't let me get overwhelmed. What it, it can just come out always without ceasing. We can just be crying, talking, praying, whatever you want to call it, but communicating with God. So it's often... It's many times. I long for your rescue, Lord. I obeyed your laws. I obeyed your commandments and laws because you know everything I do. He needs the rescue, but he's going to continue to obey. He's going to continue to walk. And really, as we've, as we've mentioned in the past, when we choose to follow God, we oftentimes will create. Not We don't create, but our following God is what brings the troubles because the world doesn't like the ways of God. And so it's that very following of God that can upset people. It's the very values that we choose that can upset people. But he's not going to stop choosing God. And that's uh, a good challenge to you and I. Oh Lord, listen to my cry. Give me the discerning mind you promised. Listen to my prayer. Let praise flow from my lips. Let my tongue sing about your word. Let me, let me not only talk to you, but let me praise you. Let me sing about you. Let me tell others about you and your goodness and your promises and all that your decrees have taught me. Give me a helping hand. Oh, Lord, I long for your rescue. Let me live so I can praise you. And the closing is a little bit strange because everything has been so faithful and he's been so spot on. And now he says, I've wandered away like a lost sheep. Come and find me for I have not forgotten your commands. Sometimes we wander. Sometimes we get wore down. Uh, sometimes we get drug into the conversation or the gossip or the, the action. And we've wandered away. Wandering doesn't mean that we've forgotten God's commands. Wandering doesn't mean that we're lost. But wandering means we need God to come pull us back. Uh, again, just give us that help that nudge in the right direction, that pull away from the situation. Um, wandering doesn't mean that we've forgotten God. It doesn't mean that we're unsaved or lost. It just means that we continually need God's help. So today, as you go through your day, I hope you'll stay strong in the word and firm. But if you find yourself wandering, just cry out to God. Just talk to him and say, God, get me out of here. Get, bring me back. And so let's pray for that strength and courage today. Father, we thank you for the words of the psalmist, just uh, acknowledging the joyfulness and the promise of your word, and yet acknowledging that just because we are obedient doesn't mean that everything's going to go right. In fact, oftentimes when we're obedient, things will go wrong because the world will hate us, Jesus said, because it hated him. 
So help us to remember that first and foremost, and then help us to continue as a psalmist, just con coming back to the faithfulness of your promises, your faithful love, and the, the truth of walking in your word. And so today, give us that strength, that courage. Help us to sing your praises today. Help us to share what you're doing in our life with someone today to encourage them, to maybe draw them to you. And Father, if we find ourselves wandering today, bring us back. Bring us back to the truth, to the promises, to the unfailing love. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, good to see you, Gail and Steve and Elaine and Josh and Sherry. Hope you all have a great day, and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.